When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. Ropepaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coating solution. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, B.J. Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, what's going on, Boise State fans? Happy Wednesday to you. It's Wednesday. That means you get a double dose of Winston Venable here on Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. My name is B.J. Rains with Bronco Nation News. He is the reason you're uh, watching right now, the former Bronco uh, great. Uh, linebacker, assistant coach, uh, you know him, you love him, Winston Venable here for his weekly Wednesday morning appearance. So uh, we got uh, got some film to break down today, Winston. We got an offensive play, a defensive play, a special Ooh. teams play, three plays that uh, you highlighted as kind of key plays in the game that we're going to break down. But uh, Boise State bounces back with a win, man, uh, and always enjoy uh, chatting with you on Wednesday. How are you, man? Hey, I'm doing great, BJ. It's it's better sitting down here at the office, you know, one and one going into the week. The the big Bronco fan that I am, man. So uh, I'm excited to get this next week rolling. I, I can imagine the boys are too. You know, after you you get a little win like that, it's like, hey, they're ready to they're ready to get going into the next week and kind of keep some of that performance that we saw um, last Friday, you know, into this next week at home. And the home opener, always a fun time. I know that the opponent, UT Martin, doesn't excite a lot of people. But, uh, hey, you get a chance to hopefully see uh, the Boise State score a lot of points and, and uh, get a big win. And it's an afternoon kickoff, 2 o'clock. Uh, you only got a certain number of times you got to run out of that tunnel, Winston. I'm sure uh, every home game is an exciting time for these these players. Yeah, and you know what, BJ, you mentioned it, 2 o'clock kickoff. I mean, that's like – that's prime because then you, you know, the family you got in town, the friends you got in town, you go and have a great football game. And then you go hit downtown for a little dinner and, and hang out with your peoples, man. Cause sometimes those seven thirty eight o'clock games, it's like, you know, everything's shut down. You can't even go, go to the restaurant after the game. So glad that this game's at two at home on the blue. It'll be awesome. Hey, uh, as I mentioned, we get you twice today, Winston. We got our big show coming up tonight as always Wednesday at eight o'clock. With Winston, Johnny, and myself, BNN After Dark, we were not canceled after episode one. We were able to uh, make it through, and we're back again for episode two of BNN After Dark. And uh, tonight, uh, another special guest. We had Tyler Shoemaker uh, last week and got a lot of great uh, comments on uh, Shoe uh, coming on and telling some great stories. And uh, we got another good one tonight, Winston. Absolutely. Got, uh, got my boy Brandon Thompson joining BNN After Dark tonight. And it'll be awesome. I'm I'm actually uh, excited to ask Brandon a couple questions, and uh, you know, one of the big ones being, I'll throw it out there right now. Well, I asked you before the show. I said, was he the one that tipped your? Uh, I said he was the one that tipped your interception, right? And then yeah. uh, you you started to tell the story, and I said, hold on, let's say it on the air here. So yeah, we'll and we'll we'll get into depth with it tonight. But you know, Brandon Thompson had two picks. Could he have had three? And what was his uh, initial reaction when I went up and got that pick? Was it excitement or was he pissed we shall see <laughs> later tonight yeah he was the defensive mvp in that game did have a pick six had another uh touchdown uh, in that game and uh or not another interception in that game so two picks in the fiestival not a bad day and then yeah set up your uh saving was that literally yours was on the the final play right of regulation yeah yeah last yeah. last defensive play of the game for us and uh yeah brandon had a great game that whole day great year uh heck of a teammate great person um, and so he went really, on to play. Uh, he went on to play what? I know he got drafted and was you know had a little bit of time in the NFL, but the CFL, right? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. He spent some time in the NFL and then went up to CFL up north and played for a couple different teams. Had some success up there. We were able to cross paths just for a little bit, and um, yeah, it's awesome. It'll be really fun to connect with BT tonight, and um, he'll have some some great stories for us. And 
bring some insight to football and just his time as a Bronco. It'll be awesome. Well, I just sent out the email uh, before the show, so you should have the email uh, in your inbox right now if you're a subscriber with the uh, private link to watch tonight's show. If you do not have the link and you're a subscriber – or if you're a military member or a student and you're on a free subscription, you may not be getting these emails either just because of the way it's set up for paying subscribers. So if you're a student or a military member and you're getting a free subscription from BNN, which, by the way, we give free subscriptions to all BSU students and all active military members, uh, just reach out and we'll uh, take care of you. Uh, send me an email and I'll send you the private link for tonight's show. You should have it already. And if you're not a subscriber, I, I say it every week, Winston, but at some point folks are going to bite the bullet and say, you know what, this thing's worth it. Uh, we're still giving out the uh, blue and orange store gift cards, $25 to the blue and orange store or pro image. If you'd rather get some NFL shirt or hat for the season and not uh, get a Boise state shirt, that's fine too. So $25 to pro image. And uh, I'll even throw in uh, a free pizza at West side pizza today as well. If you uh, jump on board and get a subscription, we got a few golf rounds left at Timberstone. We'll give you all kinds of free crap. Just mm. uh, sign up for a subscription, BroncoNationNews.com. You sign up for a one year subscription and you get all that free stuff. And then you get access to all of our exclusive content, which includes now the uh, BNN after dark show. And uh, thanks again to Circa Casino uh, Stadium Swim and Circa Sports for uh, commenting or uh, for uh, sponsoring uh, that show. And so looking forward to it tonight, Winston, eight o'clock, uh, we'll be live for the subscribers at the uh, link sent to your email. So check your email. If you are a subscriber uh, overall uh, you're right, man, it's much better uh, all week to be talking about a win than a loss uh, for Boise state. And so uh, it's Wednesday. It's kind of the middle of the week. I know we're turning our attention more towards Saturday, but uh, our first chance to catch up with you. So we are looking back a little bit at yeah. the uh, New Mexico game. I mentioned we got three plays we want to talk about and show, but just in general, uh, what were your thoughts on uh, Boise State going down to Albuquerque and uh, getting that first win of the season? Yeah, I think there was a lot of good things that came out of that that trip for them. Um, obviously, you know, back to back games on the road. So getting a road win, uh, that's really important because it's hard to travel. I mean, you, you go through all sorts of different things, situations that come up traveling. So um, just having another you know, weekend to travel and go through that road game experience and get a win was awesome for the Broncos. But overall, I think you saw a lot of young guys playing out there. Uh, you saw some moments of some really good plays, offense and defense, special teams. So collectively, obviously, there's all, uh, all sorts of things to work on. Uh, they'll address those things. But I think Bronco Nation saw little glimpses of who these Broncos can be this year in 2022. And um, it's exciting to get back on the field. Like I said, I'm sure those guys are hungry to build off of some of the positives they had last week. What uh, I mentioned the home opener, but uh, you get a win, you get to Friday game. So they got the extra day off for a little extra time to recover over the weekend. And then you're gearing up for a home opener on Saturday. Uh, you mentioned kind of the excitement level being high, but I would assume it's a a much different feeling waking up, you know, on a Monday morning after a win, as opposed to a loss, if you're a player or coach in that building. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, when you're, when you're a staff, you're, you're never going to settle, especially early in the season. So those guys are looking and critiquing hard on the mistakes, critiquing hard on all the adjustments that they might've missed out there or whatnot. So, um, you know, you have to have that level of urgency and and not being able to settle. Otherwise, you're just going to get beat going in. So I'm sure those guys are are having a tough week of practice. I'm sure the coaches are tough on them with the things they need to correct. But yeah, I mean, going in after a win, it always feels a little bit better. Hey, uh, let's uh, let's break down these three plays, man. We got offense, we got defense, we got special teams. First of all, Perry saying the defense was great. Uh, maybe we start with the defensive play because I thought that the defense really came out and set a tone in that game, Winston. And obviously, um, first play of the game, George Tarlis gets the sack. The Broncos finish with six sacks, 12 tackles for loss. Your, uh, you know, linebacker, uh, your position there, I think Zeke Noah and DJ Schramm continue to do a, a great job there. Uh, what did what, you make of the defensive effort and, and finally getting some pressure on the, the quarterback? And um, I thought the defense played pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. I think there was, you know, you see comments or whatnot about uh, some of the defense, uh, Tarlis being one of the guys, he's got an absolute motor out there. And he really put that on display uh, on Friday against New Mexico. So that was awesome. Scotty Matlock in the D line, they were living in the backfield a little bit there. So it was really awesome to see that front seven go to work. 
Uh, the linebackers, DJ Schramm and Zeke Noah, are doing an awesome job flying around sideline to sideline, making plays, causing havoc. And then what was pretty cool was seeing some of the younger guys in the secondary. Alex Tubner out there. Uh, we had Clark playing corner. There's several guys playing corner out there. And yep. I just think that that experience, Shay Oladipo and Rodney Robinson, I mean, there were several guys that were young. Of course, Tyreek Jones is flying around, but we kind of know who he is and he's going to have a great year. But I'm kind of curious what these some of these younger guys are doing. And Zion Washington, I'm looking at these numbers that haven't been out there for the Broncos yet. And it was like, hey, man, this these guys are getting valuable reps. So it was really awesome to see. Uh, a lot of the young guys playing out there. Yeah, with Markel Reed going down, you had uh, Tyreek LaBeouf and you know Kanohi Kaniho filling that other spot. I, I just posted a story this morning. If folks want to go on and read about uh, Kanohi Kaniho, I actually talked to uh, Kekala yesterday and yeah. uh, caught up with him about what he thinks how his brother's doing. And Kekala is actually coming back for the game on Saturday, uh, so that'll be unique for him to be sitting in the stands at Albertson Stadium watching his little brother out there on the field. So uh, yeah. check that out at BroncoNationNews.com. But then you meant you know no Jail Skinner either. He was out. Uh, sounds like for some sort of uh, non-disciplinary reason. So take that uh, how you want. Uh, but uh, he was not injured, apparently, or not uh, not suspended or, or not in any trouble, according to Andy Avalos. So, um, you know, we'll, they're hoping to get him back, I think, this week. But him being out, you mentioned that gave Tubner and some other guys chances. But uh, the defense stepped up, and certainly there was a, a play uh, on uh, that we're going to show right here and talk about it, Winston. Fourth down and one. This was uh, early in the second quarter. Boise State's no. uh, up 7-0, and uh, this video is courtesy of CBS Sports Network. I'm sure they'll put in the uh, copyright claim here. But, uh, we, you know, tell us, tell us, you know, fourth and one early in the game. You know, New Mexico's across midfield here. Before we play the clip, I mean, just kind of set the stage for us here and how big this play was. Well, yeah, I think it was, you know, I think it was 10-0 at the time. Uh, seven, so seven. Yeah, seven. Seven-zero. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it wasn't even 10. So, seven-zero at the time, and – uh, previously in the end of the first quarter, Boise had kind of started to get rolling, maybe a little bit of momentum. And I mean, when you're talking about big time situations and tone setters, and I know it's early in the second quarter, but that's still kind of early in the game. So you're talking about New Mexico converting a first down here or Boise State stopping them. I mean, we're talking about momentum, confidence, Scotty Matlock. All these guys are a tear in the backfield. You got three or four dudes back there on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And it just brings so much confidence for the offense to even go out there and now capitalize on what they have done uh, in their previous drive. So and somehow, as you're going to see here, Scott Matlock, they highlighted him on the you know, uh A lot of the starters, uh, you know, end up playing. You see like the Tyreek Jones right there. Um, I, I don't know if that's the way it is everywhere, but uh, it seems like a lot of starters are on special teams and a lot of emphasis is put into that. And you go down back to the, Early 2000s, man. Special teams has always yeah. been a big deal here. Well, I, I I truly believe it's it's a part of our culture and who we are as Boise Broncos. I mean, a lot of the um, blue collar, hardworking, chip on your shoulder, walk on type of guys that this program's been built off of. A lot of those guys, you know, they made their mark on special teams. So I think it's always been a big emphasis with the type of people we have here, um, and it's. It's one third of that game and it's very important. So I, I actually think if you go back and watch that game and you tally up the hidden yardage and the special teams yardage there, uh, probably pretty crazy. I mean, there were some great punts by um, Ferguson Reynolds and, and totally flipped the field and gave uh, our defense good position and gave our offense good position too. Yeah, he had a much better – Yeah, and that was kind of one of my takeaways that I talked about with Jay Tuss yesterday. Almost all the areas that were pretty bad in the first game and we said need to be better in the second game, Winston were. And in particular, you had much better punting from James Ferguson Reynolds. Uh, maybe just some fre freshman first game jitters. Uh, his first, you know, American football game over here coming from yeah. Australia. Uh, he punted much, much better. Flipped the field position around. The O-line was uh, – not great, but improved a little bit. The running game. What, what do you make of the running game, man? I mean, those are your guys, Helani and, and Genty, and both of them rushed for over 60 yards. Uh, it, you know, it, it certainly seemed like the running game got going a little more in that last game. Yeah, you, you said it, BJ. I mean, you, like you said, there's these – they're improving. There's little flashes of, of the Broncos getting better in all phases, and that's what they'll build off of. So um, the running game, yeah, I think – George, you know, was able to pop off a couple good runs and, and um, Ashton was able to get a couple good runs in there. So it's all that chemistry. It's reps, it's reps, it's reps. They got more reps uh, 
Oregon State, more reps in practice. And hopefully that just continues to be the trend where you're just getting better and better. With reps, you get better. With experience, you get better. So um, hopefully the Broncos keep on ticking up. And on that trend with uh, Tennessee Martin coming into town, and uh, they're going to be solid. Now, I know, uh, you know, George Shalani is obviously the starter. He's going to get the starter reps. But, you know, what, what Ashton Genty is doing, he continues to earn more playing time uh, with what he's doing. And from my kind of untrained uh, eye, it seems like uh, George maybe tries to find the hole a little more, maybe has a little more hesitation or juking. And Ashton Genty just gets the ball and says, try to knock me over and goes up, you know, and just kind of hits the hole maybe a little bit faster. Am I, am I, I mean, it's have a little different styles. Am I, am I off base yeah, on no. that or? No, I think you see that there might, yeah, I think you see that there are definitely two different type of backs. Um, I don't, I don't disagree with anything you said there on George. And um, I think it's similar to the Taylor green situation being you got some good dudes that can play football and they have unique talents and their own abilities. And how can we get them all on the field? Because uh, you, you want George to get going and get rolling and he needs those reps to start finding his rhythm. Uh, maybe he's not in rhythm yet, but um, that's right around the corner. Genty's just getting going. It was good that he got his fumble out early in the first week. Right. So all this experience, but pass protection and seeing reps, all those things are going to matter when it comes down to who's that guy that we trust right now to go out there, you know, and play this next game. So George is obviously the leader, but I think Genty's right around the corner and needs to continue to play and get experience just like Taylor Green. And uh, they have great experience out there and great talent. Now, Genty had that fumble in the first game right at the goal line, which, you know, really could have changed that. That was a 17 nothing game, could have been 17-7 still in the first half. You know, the game could have been different there. For a young kid in his first game to fumble and then come back and do what he did against New Mexico, rush for over 70 yards. I mean, you look up at the stats, and he's like the leading receiver right now. He's leading the team in, in some key stats. I know it's just two games in, but uh, it, it, was, it was nice to see him bounce back after that fumble too. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. Getting reps, uh, putting some of that in the past. Hank going through reads, mistakes, um, running backs going through mistakes, everybody going through mistakes, go through the mistakes early, get it out the way, learn from it, move forward, correct it. And, and that's what we saw out of those guys. So uh, I'm excited. I think those guys are going to continue to build. I think we're going to see a lot more of Ashton Genty. We're going to get George Halani going to get rolling. Um, O line's going to communicate and get their blocking schemes and all that stuff better. So uh, that was a challenging defense they faced last week, just as far as all the movement and targeting and understanding who we need to block. So uh, I think it was good for them to get those reps and get through it. And uh, we should see some more Bronco uh, chemistry going forward. Final thing for you, Winston. I mean, we saw, you know, obviously it's the home opener. I don't, you know, the, the, there was some talk yesterday about maybe, you know, looking past UT Martin, but everybody saw what Weber State did to Utah State last year, last week, crushing them. You saw Nevada lose to Incarnate Word uh, mm -hmm. last week. You know, two FCS lower teams come in and to the, uh, you know, home Mountain West stadiums and beat them. Uh, you know, Andy Avila said, hey, you only get 12 chances. You can't be looking past anybody at this point. And, um, I think you throw in the excitement of the home opener and, you know, just trying to get rolling here. You, you wouldn't expect any kind of let down or look past uh, UT Martin on Saturday, would you? I, I wouldn't be looking past or I wouldn't be any. It's college football, 18 to 24 year olds, 22 year olds. Is that uh, easy, though? I mean, I, I, I know it's easy lip service, but I mean, these, I mean, they are kids and they, they do see that, you know, they're from the FCS and they just lost to Missouri State the other day. Well, then, hey, then, then, let, hey, then the mentality should be let's go dominate them 72 to zero. I mean, that's that's where you got to get to. Right. I mean, whatever type of program you are. Um, yeah, you can you can look down on a team if you want. Hey, they're an FCS team. Well, then then we should whoop their butt. Right. I mean, um it's, it's not that easy, but yeah, so let's go out and dominate and see what type of team you are um, when you you play down to your team's level or you rise up and you crush them. So I just I just don't think that many teams – and, you know, you look at the scores and there's some teams out there that are 70-something to 10 or, you know, crazy scores, but um, it's rare. Uh, college football, these guys are battling. They care. They got heart. They got passions, and I'm talking on both sides of the ball. So – when you put up that heart and passion and let it clash, anything can happen, man. 
Hey, don't forget Saturday. Come join us at the James. Uh, Winston's friend Kent Riddle going to be joining us uh, at the James post game on Saturday. So about 30, 45 minutes after the game ends, we'll give you time to get out of the parking lot, head on over. We'll do our post game interviews, and then Kent Riddle will join us Saturday for the post game show over at the James across the street. Winston, you're welcome to stop by if you're going to be at the game. I'll buy you a drink. Maybe uh, get your thoughts on the game if you want to hang out with Kent. Uh, so hopefully, folks will come by. We'll actually be there pregame too. We'll be doing our pregame show at noon. So come by before the game, then come by after the game as well and meet Kent Riddle. And uh, But we got bigger things tonight, Winston. Give give one final plug if anybody joined late uh, about our guest tonight and what we got going on. Brandon Thompson, Fiesta Bowl MVP. That's really all you need to know. Uh, he's a great speaker, great storyteller, and I'm sure he'll have a couple of things for us tonight. So tune in, get your subscription, and, and catch us at 8 o'clock. There you go. Well, if, you, if you're a subscriber, you already should have the link in your email. If you don't or if you're a student or military member, please uh, email me and I will figure out what's going on. But you should have the email if you're a subscriber. And if you're not yet, again, you still have a chance today to get in. Brandon Thompson had two interceptions, including a pick six in that 2010 Fiesta Bowl. He's going to join us tonight, 8 p.m. Uh, for our uh, BNN After Dark Pink subscriber show. Thanks again, Circa, Circa Sports Stadium Swim. Winston, uh, appreciate you as always, man. Uh, twice in one day. I, I feel bad for you that that's the way the timing lines up, that you're uh, stuck with me twice in one day doing this. But uh, we always, always appreciate it and uh, having a lot of fun. And I think tonight is going to be a lot of fun as well. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see you at 8 p.m. tonight, man. We really appreciate it. Hey, thank you, BJ. Appreciate you, man. There he is, Winston Venable, the Winston Venable Show. We appreciate him as always, and uh, you can see previous episodes if you missed them on our YouTube channel as well. So have a great day. We'll see subscribers tonight at 8 o'clock. Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com.